We're gonna ride out of here. I think I'm gonna make Moxie run alongside because there's some dicey areas with the dirt here. So I think I'm gonna just ride it and then we'll put her on the bike once we get to the tarmac. to the Mezcal uh, distillery, which is like a six minute drive. Espina Dora Dorada. Mm -hmm. Espina Dorada, uh, golden, golden thorn. Oh. Golden thorn. Just fine. So last night was a bit of a thing. It was really nice. We did our Mezcal tasting. First we started with one primer. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had five, uh, five little tastings of different mezcals then we had um our grasshoppers and things for the grillos, yeah. our grillos for the the snacks um along with a little dessert and then she made us a like a sweet mezcal like, cocktail like, yeah okay, cocktail okay. and then greg took one more shot before we left Oh shit, that's right. Mm -hmm. Like I needed that one. Mm -hmm. Oh god, I'm feeling it. Good mezcal isn't gonna give you a hangover, so I'm sure we'll be fine. I feel like I feel like I'm gonna be totally fine. I'm gonna be beautiful. You should always have your roughly uh, New Horizons Trekker bandana is in case you forget your face mask. I mean, from a medical standpoint, it's not appropriate, but from a, you know, socially acceptable standpoint, it's at least reasonable. And since I reminded Jess like multiple times about her face what? mask, you look like a bandito. Oh. <laughs> a very colorful one, a very stylish and colorful one, but you will look like a bandito. <laughs> Do you know how to say this is a this is a hold up in Spanish? No. Es un robo al suelo. <laughs> So Moxie was again a very unsuccessful pee and pooper, but um, she's walking nicely and being good and she let me use her bandana, so that was nice of her. Very and, kind. Um, yeah, now we're going to go look for some good food. What happened to you? What happened to you when they came? Oh, I got nailed by a chili pepper. Got me like right in the... You look like a very touristy... Yeah, right in, the, right in the speaker. Couldn't, couldn't speak. So we're getting ready to leave. We're going to the Tule Arbol. It's like this gigantic tree. So I'm sitting in front of the Arbol de Tule uh, because one of the, the screws came out of my um, GoPro holder thing that Greg got made, uh, probably from all the rattling on this road on the way in. So he went off to go and look for screws and Moxie and I are just hanging out here in the shade. Um, everybody's loving her and we're just taking a little break. But unfortunately we can't really go in anywhere. No, they don't want anybody messing with it, huh? Yeah, well, these people got in, but they're fixing things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if we fix things, we can go in. <laughs> with me. So here's our tule tree. Um, it's gigantic. I don't know what you can see or what you can't see, but here we are. Greg is rehydrating. Mm. 
after a tough morning. Oh, it's always something when you start off back on the road after a small break. <laughs> something that comes loose or something you fixed but forgot to, who knows. And then we're going to continue on to Doña Rosa, which is the place where they make the black pottery. And so we get to see a little bit how they do it and maybe I'll get to buy one of the little well, black Well, I think things. we also get to put our oh, hands we get to pot, it? pot a little bit. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Driving down the road that I grew up on once again. I know, I know. Please wait. Please wait. Ah, stay. Buenas tardes. Stay. Stay. Hold on. Let me see. Okay. Okay, Moxie, you need to be fully Stay. equipped for this because this is a pottery studio. We can't number have you one. bashing everything. <laughs> Fucking bull in a pottery studio. German shepherd in a pottery studio. Moxie, did you drink? Number one. Number two, they have a cat, and you are completely untrustworthy when it comes to cats. Y perdón, Jorge, usted dijo que este barro viene de dónde? De aquí en la zona. 5 kilómetros se llama la mina. Oh, okay. Ajá. Se llama 5 kilómetros o está está a 5 kilómetros. A 5 kilómetros. Ese arroz que se ve ahí. Ah, okay. Que probablemente hace millones de años fue un lago, un río, uh -huh. y ahí se acumuló la ah. ¿no? Este es un cuarzo. Este es el descubrimiento de mi abuela. El brillo es lo que descubrió mi abuelita en 1953. La cerámica fue gris opaca por muchos siglos. Como es un barro que no tiene arena, es prácticamente una arcilla. Entonces, por eso se puede hacer este trabajo. ¿no? Entonces, mi abuela descubre esta técnica. ¿no? Se dio cuenta que menos tiempo en el horno se vuelven negras brillantes. Si ¿Es este decir, 14 horas, usted lo brilla y luego se mete en el horno. En el horno, 8 horas. Okay. Ajá, entonces menos tiempo en el horno, porque si yo la brillanto y la dejo 14 horas, se opaca, se pone gris. Ah. Entonces es un equilibrio entre brillo y temperatura, ¿no? Mm. Entonces a través de varios intentos llegó al número de horas exactas que tiene que estar en las piezas en el horno para que se pongan menos brillantes. Miren, les voy a dar una bolita de barro a cada uno. Entonces vamos a hacer la elaboración de dos piezas chiquitas, ¿no? Y que son como las más básicas que hay en este proceso, ¿no? no. no. <laughs> okay, Greg, tell us how you did the packing for the cool things that we bought. Okay, so motorcyclists have a big thing about, you know, making fun with there's too much luggage, not enough luggage, everybody's always overpacking. What we've sort of decided is that our giant loop oh. possibles pouches State. are uh, the perfect thing for uh, gifts, like gifts or, or souvenirs. Cup, a cup, and a mug on this side. So there's maybe a little bit more space here for, for gifts and then uh, anything that you could actually pack inside of the cups. That's right. And that's it. That's what you get to use. Okay. And then after that, we're going to cross over to the other highway. We're going to do a little bit of shopping for camping tonight. And then our aim... Oops. Hey, this guy's staring. He's the one... So we had a, uh, we've had a theft. A hawker theft. <laughs> yeah. It's fun time with Moxie. 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 You want to huck? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. You want to huck? Come on. Yeah, let's see that face. <laughs> well, she has to dig. This is her thing. She's a digger. So, what really was the point of that, Greg? Well, this is how hucking goes with Moxie. Moxie is not a generous hucker, okay? She doesn't share a lot. She, once it gets thrown to her, she wants to play with herself, basically. <laughs> And then every once in a while when you start to like wander off and get bored when as soon as watch as soon as my phone comes out she's gonna basically take notice and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then i try and go for it watch uh, i'm gonna go for it and then she's gonna 
take it back and start playing with herself again. <laughs> I know my dog. So we had a huck theft, and I think it was him. And he must have come in when we had the gate open at some point and took the hucker off, and it's gone now. And I don't blame him at all. I mean, what dog would not absolutely love to have their own hucker? With Moxie's smell on it. With her smell on it. But the problem is that that was our only uh, hucker that we had with us. So I guess it's just going to be sticks from here on out for Moxie. <laughs> So this whole area here where the uh, caves are is like a, a little bit of a tourist center and there's cabins all around and they're all closed except for this one where I think the family who runs this place is having their, you know, Christmas dinner. So we just had to ask the guy when we got here if, if he minded like letting us in because they had a rope over the entrance and and that was it and they were nice enough to let us in and to camp here basically in the center of all of this so they're probably doing their christmas night thing and so are we and there's no signal so jess usually calls her parents uh for christmas eve but that's not happening so it's just uh it's just the roughly pack and there's moxie she always likes camping, I think, purely because she gets to clean all the dishes and have all the leftovers. So, that's uh, Moxie's conquest of at least half of Jessica's sleeping pad. She encroached on me as well, but I, I had to uh, send her packing. She just wants what everyone else has. So, good morning to you, Moxie. Good morning. What are you thinking about eggs and coffee? Mm -hmm. No, no, don't come onto don't come onto my side. Let's see. I boiled water and now Jess is uh doing her little milk and coffee thing. And we have four eggs. We had five, which itself is, you know, never all that much for breakfast since we we usually just do egg whites. But uh now we got four. So we'll see what Jess can concoct out of four mm -hmm. to keep us fed. Oh, my lovely, loving wife. Look at how good this looks. It's even got that stringy Oaxacan cheese in it. Mm. This is what happens when we lose our hucker, or rather when other dogs steal, steal away our hucker. Moxie is left to play with sticks, you know, just like some ordinary uh, riffraff. Look at that. Look at how low class that is. Just playing with a stick. So this seems to be a bit of a spring. At least that's what they call it. Oh, okay. Manantial. Oh, okay. And what, yeah, what the uh, interesting thing here is that uh, you can't see where it comes up like from the ground or yeah. out of the ground. Right here. Is this where you went swimming last night? So yeah, I dunked right over here last night. Uh, and it was nice and chilly. Right here is nicer, however, last night when we came down here, it was swarming with those long-legged uh, spiders. I mean, swarming, like, I came real close to getting in, and I was like, you just, just don't. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's got this really beautiful, uh, sort of hazy teal color, huh? Oh, yeah, people think that that's, a, that that's gonna give them good luck when all it really does, I think, is pollute the uh, river. Oh, there's oranges, look. Look I at our bounty. I think this one's still good. I don't think that's pink. Oh. Yeah. 
comes right off. Okay, show yeah. us. Show us our bounty. Yeah, we got a little citrus uh, extravaganza <laughs> for later. <laughs> to Puerto Escondido. We still have another three and a half hours or something like that. The goal is to make it there before by, five. Yeah, by five, before five, because that's when you do the releasing of the turtles. Yeah, which we still have to call to see if they actually are doing it today, because it's Christmas Day. Moxie has many names, many middle names that is, but Moxie Schnautrest is definitely one of them. She can find a Schnautrest where nobody would else would even think to look. So I just spoke to the organization that does the turtle releasing. Mm -hmm. Sea and turtle. Sea turtle releasing. They do it on a beach uh, about five minutes from Puerto Escondido uh, near, the, near the airport. So we are how far out? An, an hour, hour and, and ten. An hour and ten minutes. It is now 319. 319, 320, which means we can make it. They start about 5, 515. So this is it's within striking distance if the road and traffic and everything uh, allows for it. So we just have to finish our cold drinks. And I'm trying to find an Airbnb that we could stay at tonight. Yes. We gotta get Moxie mounted back up because she's she's now resting. And then hopefully this all can work out. Some tourists have arrived, just like us, and uh, are kind of leaning in and looking. We got a glance at them already, and it was really awesome. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, really looking forward to this. Aquí en esta playa contamos con cuatro de las seis especies aquí en México, y una de ellas es la especie golfina, que es la tortuga más pequeña a nivel mundial. Es la que vamos a liberar hoy, y es la que... Eh, Comúnmente se dice que su población se encuentra un poco más estable, sin embargo todas están en peligro de extinción, algunas en peligro crítico y algunas en peligro de extinción. En el tipo de los reptiles la temperatura determina el sexo de, del individuo, entonces existe un rango de temperatura de 28 a 36 grados. Eh, a mayor temperatura ¿qué creen que salgan más hembras o machos? Hembras, ¿quién da más? Hembras, sí. Las hembras resultaron ser más calientes. Entonces, <risa> necesitan temperaturas un poco más altas para que salgan hembras. Nosotros marcamos a las tortugas con unas eh, placas metálicas en las aletas traseras. Muchas veces entran los carros, entonces vehículos motorizados muy pesados que dejan zanjas muy grandes en la playa. Y estas zanjas lo que provocan es que si los nidos se quedan, nos ha tocado encontrar crías así en filita, que caen en estas zanjas y ya no pueden subir porque es como arena movediza, no las no, la, no pueden este, volver a subir. Entonces, pues son de las cuestiones que se van enfrentando, aparte de la basura, aparte de este tipo de cosas y aparte de sus depredadores, pues híjoles, realmente pues supervi supervivencia que se queden en la playa pues es muy baja realmente.
So our last two releases are right there. They're slowly making the journey. But look, all the, the rest waves are gone. have been yeah, the waves have been picking up. So uh, they've all just most all of them have been swept away, which is awesome. I think we saw one or two cases where birds one, uh, yeah. one where they were sure of. I think there might have been a second one where they got them. But I would imagine that this is a pretty successful release in that case.